The first Cessna 182 was sold to customers less than a year after the first flight of the test airplane. Why was there such a rush for Cessna to develop the 182? How did it change over the years? And why does it remain so popular nearly 70 years after it was introduced? This is everything you need to know about the Cessna 182. The story begins in the early 1950s. There was a quiet revolution going on in the aviation world, and Cessna would be caught completely off guard with its lineup of airplanes. A few years earlier, Beechcraft had just released a Bonanza with a landing gear configuration that's radically different from other airplanes of that era. Instead of a tailwheel design, it switched to using a tricycle landing gear configuration, which has significantly better ground handling characteristics. They weren't as prone to flipping over during landing, and customers loved that. Tricycle gear airplanes quickly caught on with the introduction of the North American Navion, the Mooney M18, and the Piper Tripacer. The Tripacer was so popular that for every Pacer sold, Piper sold six Tripacers. With Tresco gear airplanes taking over the market, Cessna at the time had no offerings of its own. In 1955, Cessna scrambled to modify two of its most popular models, the Cessna 170 and the Cessna 180, with a Tresco landing gear. The modified 180 would be introduced the following year as the 182. It became one of Cessna's best-selling models alongside the 172, and it developed a reputation as the SUV of the sky. But things weren't as simple as it seems. Adding a nose wheel to the 180 came with a lot of unforeseen challenges. When Cessna modified the 180 with a nose wheel, they mounted it to the firewall. A firewall is a thin sheet of aluminum that separates the engine from the cabin. Since the 182 was fitted with a big and heavy engine, it was a little nose heavy. Pilots had a tendency to slam the nose wheel on the runway during landing. Normally, this doesn't cause a huge issue, but in minor cases, this can wrinkle the firewall, and in more severe cases, it can cause the firewall to collapse. As a result, Cessna strengthened the firewall several times in later models and made the nose wheel shorter which helps the pilots touch down on the main wheels first. The second challenge the 182 ran into is that the gears from the 182 were too tall and narrow for the tricycle configuration. It had a tendency to roll over during fast turns with a quartering tailwind. As a result, in 1957, Cessna shortened the main landing gears by 4 inches twice and widened the track by 5 inches. Over the years, Cessna made several big changes to the outline of the 182. In 1960, Cessna changed the straight tail to a swept tail, which had no practical advantages. In fact, the swept tail made the rudder slightly less effective as a result and added 2 feet to the overall length. Cessna made the change purely based on looks. In the first two years of 1960, the sales of the 182 were slowing down. To bring new excitement to the line, Cessna embarked on a complete redesign of the model. One of the main goals of the redesign was to make the cabin more spacious with minimum impact performance. Cessna increased the width of the cabin by 4 inches and added the Omnivision rear window. Although the rear window had no practical use in flight, it gave a more roomy and open feel in the cabin. To minimize weight gain with a bigger cabin, Cessna engineers choose to use a thinner aluminum skin for the fuselage. The new skin had more surface imperfections, which is why the new design was the first to be offered with a full paint job that helps to hide it. After the redesign was complete, Cessna only added 10 pounds to the empty weight and maintained the same cruise speed despite the bigger cabin. Although it did take a slight penalty to the climb rate and the service ceiling. More importantly, sales improved dramatically after the new design was introduced. The production of the 182 was stopped in 1986 for 10 years until 1997 with another fresh design. The new 182 was introduced with a new engine and a modernized interior. Cessna added soundproofing, new seats, and a new instrument panel that was made of painted aluminum instead of plastic. This would be the basis for the 182 that's still produced today. In the first 30 years of 182 production, different variants of the Continental 0470 were used, producing 230 horsepower. This provides the 182 with 140 knots of cruise speed while burning only 12 to 15 gallons an hour. The 0470 is a reliable engine for the 182, but it did have a problem with carburetor icing. Because the carburetor is located away from the engine's warm air, its temperature can drop as much as 70 degrees. As a result, carb icing can occur even in warm temperatures as long as the humidity is high. When production restarted in 1997, Cessna fitted the 182 with a fuel-injected 230 horsepower Lycoming engine. The fact that Cessna's parent company also owns Lycoming probably prompted the change. Let's figure out what made this airplane so popular. Imagine you're a brand new pilot and you just got your license, and the first thing that popped into your head is, I should buy a plane. This is a terrible financial decision, but so is learning to fly and that didn't stop you. So what plane should you buy? 
You ask other pilots around the school and your instructor, and everyone has a different opinion. Maybe the Bonanza, but it's fast with a retractable landing gear, and it might be too much for a brand new pilot. What about the Piper Cherokee 6 or the Cessna 172 that you trained in? With all of your flying experience so far in the 172, it just feels right. But when you start planning your first real trip as a pilot, you realize that when it was just you and your instructor, the 182 is fine. But if you actually want to go somewhere with friends and family, the 172 can't really carry that much stuff, people, or fuel. So naturally, you look into the 182 and it's perfect. It looks just like the 172 you trained in, just a little bit bigger. It's a natural upgrade for you. Depending on the model year, a 182 can carry anywhere from 1,000 to 1,200 pounds of useful load. That's enough to take 4 people in their bags and 40 to 60 gallons of fuel. That's enough fuel to take you from the San Francisco Bay Area to Las Vegas with plenty of reserve. The combination of performance and similarity to the 172 makes it a popular airplane for newer pilots to buy. If you enjoyed this video, please consider subscribing and let me know in the comments what airplane you want me to cover next. See you guys next time.